as we were out in LA, conference realignment just drops on top of our head like an asteroid. And I'm going to make some sense of it because I've had a few days to think about this and talk to a lot of very, very informed people on this matter. I know a lot of you are worried about the future of our sport. I know a lot of you are confused. A lot of you have probably been living your lives and then all of a sudden you see this and you say, all these fancy words, some of them I've never even heard before. Teams in LA are going to play a team in West Lafayette, Indiana in conference play? Well, yes, it's not the end of the world. It's different. It's a different world. It's not the end of the world. I tell you guys sometimes, just to reiterate, you're not wasting your time when you watch this show. It's nice to have some shows that are fun and there are a lot of hijinks and whatnot. It's not the kind of show we do. We have fun, but I like for there to be a lot of meat on the bone in our shows. And a lot of times what happens is we say stuff and it just gets lost to history. And this is a perfect example. And I wanted to pull a couple of clips. I had director Colin and producer Jesse working on this. A couple of things that I want to use to tee up tonight. We normally don't play these sound bites, but I think these two are really important. The first one is from August 24th, 2021. So a little less than a year ago. That's when, who was it? It was the ACC and the Big Ten and the Pac-12. They had come out and they had announced, we have formed an alliance. And at the time, most of you thought it was laughable, but let me remind you what we said. Let's roll clip one. Fresh from the mouth of the Pac-12 commissioner, there is no signed contract. There's an agreement among three gentlemen and a commitment from 41 presidents, chancellors, and 41 athletic directors to do what we say we're going to do. I, I don't know. I don't really know what to make of it. I do know this. Director Colin and I went into our building yesterday, and Colin, correct me if I'm wrong, we had to fill out three different forms to get in the building. These guys just entered into what appears to be a multi-conference alliance that requires dozens and dozens and dozens of people to be on the same page, some of whom disagreed on, oh, I don't know, if we should play football or not last year, and they essentially just slapped each other on the back, shook hands, and said, all right, let's go to lunch. We're done for the day. You hate to see it. You really do. So as a mushroom cloud plumes over the now defunct alliance, which uh, lived to be less than a year old, as it turns out, that was not the hardest thing in the world to see coming. I'll grant you that. Most people laughed at the concept of a handshake agreement amongst people who couldn't even agree on the most basic principles of college football to begin with. But there was this other thing that was happening right around a year ago today. In fact, a year ago to the day. When this stuff broke the other day, July 1st, 2021, we had a segment on Late Kick and we got mocked for it. And I know that I'm typically not one to hold a grudge, but I wrote down some names and I wrote down some dates and I kept them in my back pocket. You're not wasting your time watching the show. When I talk about this sort of stuff, it's not because I myself am informed. I've never brokered a deal between conferences and television networks, but I do talk to people who do it. And at the time, we were being told some very specific things behind the scenes. I shared them on the show. This is from July 1st, 2021. The super conference illusion is that there's enough to go around where we form four super conferences out there. There aren't enough quality programs to go around. You have seen what's happened. You have seen who has it and who doesn't. And even in the Big 12, you're just taking two teams out of that conference. We're talking about the Big 12 possessing so little remaining juice that they either got to poach themselves or they just implode in on themselves. There aren't enough brands out there to formulate four legitimate super conferences. I'm telling you right now, I don't think there are enough big brands out there to formulate three super conferences. And so ask yourself this, because your answer may be yes. If it is, we just differ. Are you comfortable with a future of college football existing where you just have the SEC and I would guess an entity like the Big Ten and it really becomes a lot synonymous with what the NFC and the AFC are. And you've done so at the expense of many a program. Are. Here we are. Yes. Uh, so that is very much the track that college football has taken and is in the process of taking. Now, I'm going to give you a little bullet point here. And I want you to tuck this away in the back of your mind because I'm going to repeat it. I would say probably in about eight to ten minutes. They have to listen to you. You may think your voice is not being heard right now. You may think folks don't care one iota about how you or I feel about the direction of this sport, but I can assure you, friend, they have to listen to you at the end of the day. Keep that in mind, 
And then let's dive into this for just a second, because I know a lot of this sounds complicated. I know you have heard a lot of legalese and a lot of grant of rights and how much it costs to get out of this and how much it costs to go over there and who's going to poach who. I know a lot of this stuff sounds complicated. It's really the most basic as it can possibly be. You just have to understand how to decipher the nomenclature. Even that word is something I have no business using. Here's college football in a nutshell. On the field, it's the greatest game in the world. Off the field, it's a lot of people in suits, no different than politicians, whose core talent is to get elected or to elevate bureaucratically. And when they get to where they want to go, they realize we need to make this stuff sound complicated. That's what politics is all the time. That's what college football has become. All it is, guys, is the most basic transactional elements of your life and my life cloaked in a lot more fancy language. So when you hear this language this week and all these contractual terms and it sounds complicated, it's really not at all. It's no different than politicians creating their own language so they can trick you into thinking that they're operating on a higher intellectual plane and you need to just elect them and send them off to Washington. They'll take care of all of it. Just give it to us. Let me take it out of your hands. It's kind of the same thing here. The weakest take that I have heard all week, let's dive in a little bit because I know you've heard this and I think some of you may have said this, it's just weak, it's not reality. So a lot of people were of the opinion as soon as this news broke with USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten that this would never have happened if the playoff had expanded. And I'm telling you, sometimes it's a matter of opinion and sometimes you're just wrong. And if you think that, you're just wrong. I've been wrong before, you're wrong if you think that. The playoff is almost happening in a different lane than this stuff. And if you believe that they're joined at the hip, you need to consider how clunky this entire timeline has been. Like the same guys are in the room talking about the playoff as the ones in the room talking about conference realignment and conference expansion. Does it really seem like this has been well orchestrated? Does it really seem like the power players have had these on converging timelines? Absolutely not. In fact, that's part of the reason why this last deal kind of fell flat up there at National Championship Monday in Indianapolis. Remember when the headlines that morning from the, uh, the assembled gaggle of college football media there was so depressed. Oh man, we don't get our expanded college football playoff. Uh, how messy did that seem? This has not been orchestrated uh, with any kind of neatness whatsoever, but the playoff had little, if anything, to do with this. As I tweeted out yesterday, I'll repeat it for those of you who don't follow on Twitter, at Lake Kick Josh, though I would suggest you do. To assume that expanding the college football playoff would have alleviated the need to realign conferences is to assume that a school like USC would stay on the West Coast and watch a program like Rutgers cash 50 million more dollars per year in media rights and be fine with it because, oh, the Pac-12 has an auto bid to the playoff now. How foolish is that? That's really what people believe. How foolish. It's, it's, that's not even reality. That's not the way this was working. It's not the way it is working. This is about acquiring assets. That's exactly what it's about, but not at the conference level. That's where the big trick is. That's kind of where the illusionary bait and switch is right now. You've heard me talk about this for a couple of months, and some of you have been shrewd enough to pick up on something I've hinted at that we can just talk about now. I have said for quite a while, whether it be playoff expansion or whether it be conference realignment, that when the next round of that happens, it's going to be obviously university presidents and conference commissioners, but television executives whose names you probably don't know are going to have a huge role in this next round. And I kept on reiterating that. I kept on emphasizing TV executives. And some of you finally started to ask, hey, why do you keep saying that? Well, this is why I kept saying it. ESPN and Disney about two years ago announced that they were acquiring the SEC starting in 2024 and beyond, the media rights to the SEC, for about $3 billion. Why did they do that? Why would Disney ESPN shell out that kind of money for the SEC's college football product? Well, the reason is because it is that valuable. And the reason it's valuable is because in the era of streaming network wars, what people have found out even in 2022 is your habits, the American consumer's habits, are still pretty unpredictable and hard to figure out, except in one avenue. Everybody, everybody is watching live sports, or at least so it seems. 
Those are the only fail-safes. Those are the only foolproof. That's not any kind of major breaking news. I think people have gotten for a long time. Sports are popular. But here's where the disconnect is right now. The disconnect has been in thinking that evil Greg Sankey in Birmingham and whoever you want to attribute this latest move to, some people are attributing it to Kevin Warren in the Big Ten. I happen to think there may be some other power players behind the scenes, but uh, for the sake of argument, let's just say Kevin Warren. Evil Kevin Warren in the Big Ten and evil Greg Sankey in the SEC. They, those, those money-hungry you-know-whats are going and grabbing all the properties out there that they can in college football. Guys, that's not what's happening. The SEC did not acquire Oklahoma and Texas. Disney ESPN acquired Oklahoma and Texas through the SEC. No different than Netflix buying the rights to one of your favorite TV shows from a production company. It's just dressed up a little different and you don't look at it the same way. But make no mistake, when I've been talking to you about these media rights deals for the Big Ten and we've been waiting for about a month, month and a half, and I've been hinting at that as well, as it turns out, there was a really good reason why that news hadn't broken. And it hadn't broken because the Big Ten knew they were about to add some precious inventory. So the Big Ten may look like they just acquired USC and UCLA. Big Ten didn't acquire anything. Their future major TV partner, whether it be Fox or CBS or whoever it's going to be, that's who acquired it. It's just a different lens with which you need to look through, but that's how you make sense of all this. And it's also how you know just as well as I do, once you learn to look at it through that lens, that we're not done. There are more moves coming, very obviously. There are a lot of questions and a lot of legal matters that need to be um, dealt with in terms of like grant of rights deals and whatnot, and that's kind of boring to even talk about. I think those hurdles will be overcome, and eventually I think one or both of these conferences will end up expanding a little bit more. But that is kind of stuff that you've already been observing. What I've been asked a lot, and what I want to talk about for a couple of minutes here, is how it makes me feel, because I know how it makes a lot of you guys feel. I've spoken to, I don't know how many dozen of you through DMs, maybe hundreds of you. A lot of you are not happy at all about the direction of college football. And I'd be lying to you if I said I was thrilled at the news when we woke up, what was it, Wednesday morning or Thursday morning in LA. No, I mean, I didn't, I didn't turn cartwheels over that. You know my stance on this stuff. I'd love to just hit the pause button in certain aspects of society, this being one of them, and maintain the territoriality and the regionality. I love that Southern football is different than West Coast football is different than Midwest football. I love that because it is one of the distinguishing attributes that our sport has always had on Saturday that set it apart from the Sunday game. And I, I know a lot of you rightfully, I think, are looking at the latest moves and you're saying, how is this not just nationalization of college football? Not in the economic sense, but more in the structural sense. I mean, we've got teams in California, teams in Pennsylvania. You're telling me that's all one conference? What are we doing right now? I get your frustration. I share your frustration. But when you ask me, will I still love college football? It's a no-brainer. Absolutely. I'll still love college football. I don't have to like all the moves that are made in this sport. But it's kind of like I've told you before, you know, I think there are probably some products you have in your house that you really don't want to know the backstory on. You see that sticker that says made in whatever country. I don't think a lot of you want to know exactly what made in whatever country means all the time. You just know you buy the product and you like the product. I have chosen to look at college football the same way lately. Uh, there may be a lot about NIL you don't like. There may be a lot about the transfer portal you don't like. Certainly there may be a lot most recently about conference realignment you don't like. Here's my question. When it is Texas versus OU, or let's say in the future, when it's USC versus Iowa, and it's 17 to 14, early fourth quarter, and there's a key third down, will you be less into it? Will your heart be less into it on that play? My answer is no. My answer, at least in the short to midterm, is I'll be every bit on pins and needles then as I would have been in 2008 or 1994, because that's just where my mind's at. Now, if you're worried about the future, I understand that. I want to draw you right back to the sentence I told you to keep in mind. You remember, probably about 10 minutes ago, I told you they'll eventually have to listen to you. The dollar figures being thrown around right now are being thrown around because networks believe that these properties are worth it. ESPN Disney believes the SEC is worth $3 billion over 10 years. The Big Ten's about to get a huge financial windfall. So much so that after the news broke the other day, 
entities like Apple TV asked to get back in the bidding for a media rights package that they had bowed out of. So I think it may be a little more delay than we thought it would be to find out uh, the Big Ten deal. But anyway, I'm telling you, your voice is eventually going to be heard. It's the same way with Netflix right now. It's the same way with Amazon. It's the same way with Hulu. A lot of those streaming giants are finding out that your interests matter. For, for a little while, people looked at the streaming bubble and unlike every other bubble in the history of mankind, thought, oh, that one's not going to pop. This is just going to inflate forever. No, that's not the case at all. The market got saturated and it will only become more saturated. And it turns out you can't just put any chunk of crap in front of people on your streaming network when they have options and have them watch. College football is no different, guys. You grew up loving it. I grew up loving it. And that's the reason it's as popular as it is right now. But the qualities about a product that bring people in mass to love it have to remain or the people end up walking away. And if you think for one second that they're shelling out the kind of money that they are to then not really worry about what the quality of the product is after they've signed on the dotted line, you're kidding yourself. This is not like your flood damaged car that you're trying to fleece someone into buying and then once they sign you go, got them, sucker, not my problem anymore. No, it very much is Fox's problem or CBS's problem or ESPN's problem if they have a product that has diminishing value because you have diminishing interests. So you may feel like you're not heard right now, but the most powerful voice in this equation has been and always will be your remote control or whatever you want to call it in the future. And if you choose to go elsewhere, and if enough of you choose to go elsewhere, they'll listen. I'll give you this little cherry on top and we'll move on here. I know right now it feels like college football is taking a more national approach, and it is. But virtually everyone who loves our game loves the territorial nature of it. Everyone loves the geographical nature of it. I don't know any kid that I grew up with, I don't know any adult I know now that grew up saying, you know what I hate? I hate regional rivalries. You know, I, re I really hate that there are these specific pockets of the country that are totally unique under other pockets of the country. Every college football fan loves that. And if you didn't love it, you just go watch the NFL. A lot of us watch both. But the thing we love about the Saturday game is the regionality. For a little while, certainly I think it's inevitable we're headed to that two super conference model. But people won't forget the regionality and what they came to love. So what's going to happen is a little bit of a recalibration here. This is my personal feel. A little bit of a recalibration period, and you've got a massive SEC. You've got a massive Big Ten. But in time, once we figure out what the landscape is, if we are even adopting an NFL model, an NFC-AFC model, that's not the way the NFL is structured. The NFL is structured with two conferences, sure enough, but there are divisions within those conferences. Ironically, I think where we may end up heading is a situation where you got two major conferences, but then, lo and behold, five or six years down the road, seven years down the road, you divvy things right back up and you distribute teams into pods or divisions or whatever you want to call them right back up and you get that territoriality back. It's just a different group of teams. So we've filtered out the haves and the have-nots. Is that unfortunate? Yes, it is. I don't like that aspect at all, but there are certain parts of this that I've come to understand I'm just going to have to accept. So what we can control is that remote control. They'll have to listen to you eventually. Maybe not immediately, but they will have to listen to you eventually. I think the sport's going to be fine. I don't think it's end of the world, let's just go throw babies off the tallest building. I don't think it's that time at all. There will be an adjustment period. I think we'll be OK. 